Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we've got the next signature shoe in the NBA, Nikola Jokic channeling and, wait, what? A WrestleMania preview, the week Titus releases, and of course, we have our Hard Pass. All right, let's start with some hot takes. So, Shams Sharnia dropped a Woj level sneaker bomb in the past week when he said that Shea Gilgis Alexander's signature shoe is on the way. Now, while most people who are locked in assumed it would be Converse since that's the brand that SGA currently rocks, there might actually be another entity in play since he's a sneaker free agent in September. However, if a signature shoe is already in the work, does that mean his next destination is already done? Like if it's outside of the Nike Converse Jordan umbrella, Can they already work on an SGA shoe while he's still under contract with Converse? Could Adidas or New Balance or even Reebok already have a handshake deal in place and they're fast tracking the Shea one by the start of next season? And if SGA wins MVP this season, unlikely, but outlets ranked him as number two behind Nikola Jokic. Can he carry a signature shoe in OKC like Kevin Durant or Wessel Westbrook before him? So many questions about SGA. And I haven't even gotten around to Googling if anybody has Photoshopped him in a Lakers jersey. Have, have they? They have? Of course they have. And then there's also the dream that he would have looked great playing alongside Kawhi Leonard, Russ, and James Harden as the Clippers opened their new arena in Inglewood if... They hadn't traded him for former signature shoe guy, Paul George. And speaking of Nikki Jokic, he recently debuted a Neon Genesis Evangelion influence colorway of the 361 degree Big 3 Future High with the look at his new signature logo this past week. And that was a lot of words to say. Anyway, it's got a purple and green upper and midsole with subtle hits of red throughout. And for fans of the Evil One, it's a neat callback to the iconic mech that has transcended generations and spawned countless discussions about individuality, consciousness, freedom, choice, and responsibility. I mean, Who would have guessed Jokic was a big fan of Shinji? I mean, they're nothing alike. Jokic is arguably the most skilled big man since Hakeem Olajuwon and by all accounts is a beloved teammate. Shinji Yukari is a socially awkward kid with daddy issues and doesn't get along with anybody. Like, even Pinpin didn't seem to like Shinji. I bet you Pinpin would have loved Jokic. Man, Jokic being an anime guy makes us admire him even more. Wait, wait, what? It's, it's the Joker? Well, that's boring. That's kind of like, like all these other athletes with Joker tattoos who either neither read the comic books or they really read the comic book and are down with being a chaotic evil. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Adidas has revealed wearable shoe boxes ahead of April Fool's Day. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But hold on. How come nobody's going to take credit for this one like the Air Max wallets last week? I've seen people wearing loaves of bread and grapes on their feet, put condoms on their shoes so they won't get wet, and nobody is going to get on here and declare themselves the OG shoebox wearer and ask Adidas to cut them a check? Hmm, interesting. Uh, Speaking of asking for a check, John Geiger is back and he's out here asking for flowers. Hey, it's nice to want things, John. The, uh, so the longstanding who put on for the foams debate appears to be over. Nike is releasing a DMV exclusive colorway of the Foam Posit 1 in the near future. Now, I feel like this would have been way more exciting 10 years ago when the rivalry was really popping, but hey, better late than never. As somebody who is not from the DMV or New York, I wonder if this is still a thing they brag about there now, or has the time for foams passed by and is just waiting for the next region to bring them back to life, like Japan with Dunks once upon a time, or the UK with Air Maxes, or LA with the Cortez. I don't know. Finally, before we move on to the pick of the week, Paul Pierce's infamous poop game shoes from the 2008 NBA Finals are now available for $40,000. Yes, if you haven't heard, Pierce admitted a few years back that he wasn't actually hurt during that sequence in the finals and that he just needed to go to the restroom. Since then, he's kind of waffled on whether or not he pooped in his shorts, but it doesn't matter. It's Paul Pierce. It's poo-poo related. And the shoes are called the Nike PP4. As a Lakers fan, that championship will always be stained. No word if it includes the shorts with it uh, as a... evidence or the wheelchair that they use to push Pierce to the restroom if that's included with the shoes either anyway uh pick of the week is the adidas ae1 georgia red clay this is going to be on the fourth for 120 bucks look that train you see leaving 
That's the Adidas AE1. With every new colorway selling briskly, but I would say not fast enough that you'll miss out if you wait a week or two, it looks like Adidas may have found their next big thing. It also helps that Anthony Edwards has been balling out and having great moments in the shoe too. Like last week's dunk slash shot against the Jazz and when he put the Pistons in a spin cycle. Wait, no, let the clip finish. <sighs> He's so good. That's a good one. All right, so... We are a week out from pro wrestling's biggest weekend, WrestleMania 40 in Philly, and two weeks away from golf's biggest weekend, the Masters. Unfortunately, your boy won't be there for WrestleMania or Wale Mania even, so our streak for myself and co-writer attending Mania while the other is in Augusta for the Masters ends at just one year. Now, that should be a tradition unlike any other. Shout out to Jim Nance, or is it Michael Cole who said it? Oh man, you know what I bet? I bet Pat McAfee, he's going to take our spot and be at both. This makes me mad. Anyways, let's run through some predictions for Mania this week and then the Masters next week. So there's still a full week before Mania, so we're guessing a few more matches are going to be announced, but let's go through what we know so far. LA Knight and AJ Styles open night one, keeping the megastar as far away from the rock as possible. If you know, you know. Anyways, Knight wins to get the crowd hype. Awesome truth wins the tag team titles in a brutal six-team ladder match. Dissension is teased in the Judgment Day with Damian Priest walking out on Finn Balor. Logan Paul retains against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, but not before taking an RKO on a Prime logo slapped on the ring. Bailey gets her well-deserved moment as this year's Kofi Kingston slash Daniel Bryan and beats EO Sky for the Women's World Championship. The Rock and Roman Reigns defeat Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins via shenanigans. Rock pins Cody, Seth Rollins gets the SmackDown laid upon him, setting up Drew McIntyre dog walking Rollins to start night two with an endorsement from final boss Rock as Drew becomes champ once more. CM Punk, who's on commentary for the match, stares a hole at Rocky, rekindling that rivalry for a future date. Jimmy Uso beats Jay Uso. Both Rollins and Jay are both to beat up to help Cody in the Bloodline Rules main event. Gunther retains his championship against Sami Zayn in the best match of WrestleMania weekend until Rhea Ripley retains her championship against Becky Lynch in the best match of Mania weekend. Cody Rose finishes his story and beats Roman Reigns, but not before he has a Captain America in Endgame moment where the Bloodline are all lined up against him. Then, out of nowhere, Seth Jay, a one-armed punk, Randy, Sammy, and KO appear to even the odds with John Cena and Stone Cold Steve Austin making surprise appearances to take down The Rock. Cody pins Roman, everyone celebrates. Until the next night on Raw when Damian Priest cashes in his money in the bank contract. Never forget, Cody Rhodes is Dusty's son and Dusty knew better than anybody that the real money in the chase and so a new story begins now of course it's totally possible wwe books roman to retain because they love chaos and they want him to surpass racist dumpster fire hulk hogan to become the longest reigning champ of the modern era either way i'm fine with it as long as the rock remains the bad guy the worst thing they could do now is have Rock turn on Roman and become a pandering good guy again just when final boss Rock is starting to cook. I don't care how much Papa Tui skincare products he wants to sell. The best Rock is bad guy Rock. The only acceptable way for the Bloodline story to end is with something we've talked about here before. A one match cinematic live event on an island in Samoa to kick off the WWE and Netflix partnership in 2025. On one side, it's Final Boss Rock with all the newer Bloodline members and a good guy Roman Reigns on the other with Solo, Jimmy, and a returning Jay. Roman wins because he's got to look strong, brother. But really, the real winner is Rocky. Imaged rehab, mission completed. And to think, none of this would have happened if people had just watched Black Adam. All right. It's time for this week's Hard Pass. We take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like sneaker culture war bullshit. All right, let's start with the video by Ryan Sullivan that circulated on the sneaker aggregator accounts showing off what appears to be a mall in Medellin, Colombia, filled to the brim with kicks. J Balvin 3s, 
Louis Vuitton trainers, Adidas Yeezys, Travis Scott ones, you name it, they've got it. Only problem is that the sneakers are replica or fakes or unauthorized authentics or whatever term the kids are using today in order to convince themselves that it's okay to wear them. Some are obviously imitations of the real things while others, well, they kind of require you to squint a little bit to see the discrepancies. But I use problem in quotation marks, not because I have an issue with reps per se. I mean, as somebody who creates for a living, I'll admit that there is something a little unnerving about the lack of desire by the generations behind me for authenticity in whatever they're into. But sneakers, not really that high up on the list if we're being honest. I feel like people should be allowed to wear the sneakers that they want to wear. And if it means paying 20 bucks for bootleg Travis Scott Fragment 1 lows, so be it. Just, you know, don't pay more than 20 bucks. The whole point of wearing fakes is that you should be paying dirt cheap prices for sneakers that look comparable or indistinguishable from the authentic pair. If you're paying more than 20 bucks for, say, replica chunky donkeys, you're doing it wrong. But that's not what we're doing a double hard pass on. No, outside of the corporate and geopolitical ramifications of the proliferation of fakes into the mainstream, I feel like the onus should be on the brands to resolve this issue by producing enough sneakers to satisfy demand while maintaining whatever aura they want to retain. Like, the real question is, what does Nike have to lose by producing enough chunky donkeys or Chicago Ones or Kobe Protros that the people who want them can buy them easily enough on launch day and those that want to wait for a sale can wait for a sale? We should examine that for another time, but for now, let's talk about stupid ass comments that people make in these posts. On the one side, we've got the people who defend reps and on the other, the old heads who seem like they would rather die than wear reps. Like, okay. Difference of opinion, nothing wrong with that. If somebody wants to wear fake sneakers, that's their prerogative. And if an OG sees that and is turned off by it, that's fine too. What I can't get behind is the pettiness both sides exhibit when they try to justify their takes. Like, let's start with the okay with reps crowd. Now, a lot of people do wear reps just to wear them. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones who go online and parrot the line, well, they're made in the same factory as the real ones, so they're basically the same thing. I've been around long enough to know that argument wasn't commonplace before. It's when influencers and people who did the research started saying that some reps came from the same factories and used the same molds as the originals. Once that factoid circulated, using that excuse to justify wearing reps started becoming more prevalent. And because it's social media, some reps are made in the same place as the originals quickly became all reps are made in the same place as the originals. So really what I'm wearing is just as real as the sheep who paid resale for yours. Man, that's a Michael Jordan extending his arm to beat the Monstars level stretch if there ever was one. And look, I'm not here to argue whether that's true or not because let's be real, I don't have the time or the capacity to care to look up where a rep was made. If you look at Ryan's video or any video that does these fake sneaker mall tours, you can tell that not all reps are created equal. What bugs me is why do the people in the comments need to justify wearing reps? Just wear them. Like the least interesting conversation I can have with a person who wears reps is telling me where they got their reps. I imagine it would go something like this. Hey man. I'm Jacques Slade. Yeah, man, big fan, big fan. Hey, guess what? These Balvin 3s are reps. Oh, really? Wow, that, that's cool. Uh, good, good for you. Yeah, I got them from this mall in Colombia and you know, they're made in the same place. Word, that's super interesting. I would love to hear more about how you got it. Oh, wait, I think it's co-writer calling me. He needs my bank routing number for something. It's weird. He's been doing a lot of bilateral cash games lately. And I didn't even know you could bet on that. Anyways, nice talking to you person who wears reps. If you wear reps, you shouldn't really care where the reps are made. The only thing that should matter to you is that they are close enough, wearable enough, comfortable enough, and durable enough to the real things. I also don't like the, well, some of them are made better than the original BS either. Assuming that's true, Congrats, you're wearing those knockoff Jordan 4s that Hinder Ski made a decade ago that were like $800. Hypebeast might call them remakes to justify their existence. I call them reps with a different name. No better or worse than what you saw in Medellin. People who wear reps because they missed out on a sneaker they really wanted are fine. People who wear reps to flex or deceive or both are probably clout vampires. Shout out to the OG clout vampire, Chris Jericho. 
As for my OGs out there who stay arguing with these kids, man, aren't we a little too old for this sh It's like the DMV films or the current Kendrick Drake J. Cole beef. Like this would have been really interesting 10 years ago. Now it feels like the dud that was the eventual Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. Like why bother? No, really. That's all I have to say to my fellow sneakerheads who have been in this game for a minute. Why waste your time with people you are never going to convince or are too jaded to even care to listen to what you have to say? These are sneakers. This is not the upcoming election. It's like every Jordan versus LeBron debate. There are no winners, only losers who partake in them and the poor bastards who have to see it and hear it. Your time would be better served doing something productive like telling stories of how you used to wear fakes and reps and bootlegs and how that changed over time. There's no need to chastise the kids who are going through this cycle because it's just that, a cycle. And if you've been doing this long enough, you were in that cycle once, you got out of it and you've seen this play out a few times already. And while I started this hard pass saying this whole argument is dumb, there were a handful of comments that I love because they said, man, haven't we been through this already a few times before? And the answer is yes, yes we have. Thankfully, there is still a level of self-awareness out there. I just wish there was more of it. We should just let the kids cook. If they get burned by fakes or reps or not, that's on them. This is not your hove did that. So hopefully you don't have to go through that moment because it's just sneakers. It's not real life. So in closing, make more Kobe Pro Trolls, John Donahoe. Oh, and we'll cover the Kind of funny timing of New Balance revealing Shohei a tiny signature logo just a day before all the news broke about Shohei's alleged involvement in a gambling scandal on next week's show. We just need more info because it's either the biggest deal in a Michael Jordan played baseball and no one really knows why conspiracy kind of way or it's simply a case of a homie covering up for his friend's screw up in the messiest way possible. Either way, should be a fun next few months for New Balance, huh? All right, that's going to do it for the show. Hey, thank you for watching Hard Pass. I'm Jacques Slade. I'll see you next week, but not before we leave you with a viewer Hard Pass. Yo, Jacques, what's up, brother? Hope all is well. It's your favorite Hard Pass to Leon Morgan on Instagram, Leon Morgan Acting. I would love to give a Hard Pass to racism in the sneaker world. I know that sounds crazy because this is a community where we're supposed to express ourselves with our footwear. It's supposed to be all welcoming, right? Yeah, it exists, especially in skate shops. At first, I used to think, okay, you know, the skating world, they like to uh, shun the quote-unquote posers, and, you know, they size you up to see if you're a skater, and if you're not, they don't respect you, but I get this a lot from a lot of my uh, black friends and Hispanic friends. They walk into a sneaker store, and they automatically get eye rolls and scoff that, and you know what the crazy thing is? Those workers who are scoffing at us are wearing Air Jordans, wearing LeBron shoes, kind of like... The Celtics fans who will call the players on the away team, you know, the N-word while wearing a Paul Pierce jersey. And there's a lot of it on Nike Talk, too. But that is my hard pass. Oh, and by the way, Jacques, I'm having a baby girl in September. You know, her, you know, her uh, collection is going to be out of this world, brother. But be safe, be well, and thank you for your time as always. Keep doing it up, brother. If you'd like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us. 818-493-9325. Leave a short message or socials if you want. No more than 30 seconds. All right. I'll see you next week. Peace.